yesterday we finished the Shema Yisrael, and I told you that the three blessings of the Shema, the first one deals with God's revelation in nature. The second one is Torah, and the third is Mashiach. So the third blessing of the Shema, which comes right after the Shema, it starts with the word emes, right? You know, we end of the Shema, Hashem alokeichem emes, and the Chumash it only says Hashem alokeichem. It doesn't say emes, right? Emes is the first word of the next blessing. In Shachar it's called emes v'yatsiv. In Meirav it's emes v'yamuna. But we're not allowed to separate, thank you, between the word emes, Hashem alokeichem and emes. As soon as you say Hashem alokeichem, you have to say emes, right? So you say Hashem alokeichem, someone says a bracha. You can't say amen. You have to say Hashem alokeichem emes. So in the last book, on page 95, the last bracha of the Shema, we're reviewing what we said in the Shema, and we're talking about the final redemption. It's true, it's certain, it's established, it's enduring. It's fair, it's faithful, it's beloved, it's cherished, it's delightful, it's pleasant, it's awesome, it's powerful, it's correct and accepted, it's good and it's beautiful. This affirmation of the of, 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 just that's going on, all, uh, all these the scriptures are going on in the Shema. True, he's the God of the universe. He's our king. He's the rock of Jacob. He's the shield of our salvation. Generation to generation, he endures. His name endures forever. His throne is forever, right? This is a, a st- uh, affirming what we said in the Shema. It's like Amen on the Shema. On our ancestors, upon us, on our children, on all generations, all generations of the seed of Israel, on the original ones, on the later ones. It's a beautiful thing forever, this acceptance of God's kingdom. True, you are God, you are king, our redeemer, our creator. You save us forever, and there's no God besides you. Next page. The helper of our father is forever. So we're going, we're re, we, we, we re, over, going over what we just said in the, in the Shema. Your highest place above. Happy is the man who listens to your commandments. Besides you, there's no other God. And finally, we, find out, we end up with the review of the revelation, of the going out of uh, uh, the spitting of the Red Sea, right? With God, uh, on, the, on the sea, do they say to you, right? Who is like you among the mighty ones of God? They sing a new song before you, right? Hashem, Yilmach, 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 And... Once we mention the splitting of the Red Sea, the revelation going out of Egypt, we end up with the rock of Israel, get up to the help of Israel and, and, and redeem, like you've spoken, the Jude and Israel, redeem us, Baruch Hashem, go all Yisrael. And at this moment, the rabbis say, God is here. This is the structure of the Siddur. We started off with the morning blessings, right? I opened up all my, all my presents. Then we had the Karbanas, right? How do we come close to God, symbolically? Then we had the Sukkot of Zimra, right, right? Seeing God all in, in nature, seeing God in the, Jew, in the history of the Jewish people. Then we had the brachas of the Shema, nature, Torah, accepting upon ourselves the yoke of kingdom. And now we're mentioning the going out of Egypt, and at this point the rabbis say, God is down here. He's right in front of us, right, right? And you say the bracha of Gal Yisrael, and immediately you start the Shemona Esra. You're not allowed to say, do anything in between. We don't even say, Amen. The bracha, you say the bracha, either the chazan says, Bracha Tashem, Gal, and he says, Yisrael, quietly, no one says, Amen, or you say it together with him, right? And the rabbi says, someone who separates between Gal Yisrael and Shemona Esra, it's like knocking on the king's door. You heard the song, knock, knock, knock in heaven's door, right, 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 right. And before the king has a chance to answer, he goes away. Okay, the king opens up the door, he's not there, goodbye. You lost your opportunity, right? After saying everything until now, God is there in front of us, right, right? And we got to grab the opportunity and start immediately the Shemona Esrei. And if you don't, you missed the boat. Go all Yisrael. Throughout the Shema, throughout the Shema he's with you. And then that but exactly, but at this point, God Yisrael, that's the epitome. We, we, until that, we're working on it, getting him closer and closer and closer, right, right, right? And he's there. Now he's there. Go all Yisrael. And immediately we start the Shemona Esrei. Okay. Now, in my riv, in my riv, we also have a Goal Yisrael, right? We also have a brach in the end. But then we have an addition, Hashkivenu. We have another brach in the end of my riv. Turn to page uh, 261. We'll start off with the bracha. Emes v'yemunah, again, it starts emes. I believe all this. Fulfill it. He's our God. There's no one besides him. The whole blessing of them. Again, we mentioned the, 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 the splitting of the Red Sea. And we end up going Israel, but in my riv we add another blessing. On page 262, 63 in the English, Hashem Hashem We add another blessing, right? The rabbis say that this is a longer Gual Yisrael. And the reason for this is because uh, the synagogues used to be out in the fields. And when they finished, if someone came late to my riv, if he finished late, everybody would go home, he'd have to walk home all by himself, which was dangerous. So they added a little bit, another prayer, they should, it'd be longer than he should be able to catch up, right? right? Make us lie down in peace and stand us up in, for life and spread upon us the, the sukkah of your, your peace and fix us up, right, with good advice. 
and save us for your sake. We end up, Baruch Atah Hashem, Shomer Amor Yisrael Lad, and Chutzlar is even a, lo- even a longer one, a longer one. This is all the continuation of redoom- redemption. Okay, so get back to page 98, the Shmon Esrei. Now we begin the Shmon Esrei. So we take three steps back and three steps forward, right? We're going into a different realm. We're standing before God. I think the main thing is the three steps forward, right? You don't have to take three steps back. Three steps just to, you know, you want to stand in this space, you go back, you know, right? but if you, go, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you don't care what you say, you can just take three steps forwards. And we say, Hashem, open up my mouth, and my mouth, shall, my mouth shall tell your, open up my lips, and my mouth shall tell your praises, implying what is the normal state of the mouth? Closed, <laughs> right, right, right? Keep your mouth closed, right, right? And we come to David, we say, open up your lips, right? That's the normal state of the mouth, right? And you bend your knee, Baruch, you bend your head at all. You say, Hashem, you lift your head up. Baruch at Hashem. Blessed are you, Hashem. Baruch comes from Berach Keberkayim. Berkayim means the knees, right? You are, you are the source of blessing. And again, when you say God's name in the first blessing of the Shema, of, of, of the Shemona Esra, you have to have in mind what I told you yesterday. Hashem is Hoya Hovev Yeyeh, was, is, and will be. Adon Olam, master of everything. Because Yud Kei Vav Kei is a contraction of Ho Yehov Yehyeh, and we pronounce it Adonai, it's Adonolam. Elokeinu, you have to think he's the ruler, he's the judge, he's the omnipotent, master of all power. And the God of our fathers. He's the God of Avraham, he's the God of Yitzchak, he's the God of Yaakov. We're presenting our credentials, right? We are the descendants of your beloved ones, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who taught you your word to the world. To the world. Hakel the Lord, Agadol the Great, Hagibor the Mighty, Ba'an the Raw and the Awesome, Kel the Young, God on High. So, in introduction, I asked the question, right? Can you butter up God? Right? God, you're great, you're mighty, you're awesome. Give me this, give me this, give me this, thank you very much. You can't butter up God. God doesn't feel good because he's, he's great and mighty and awesome. And we explained in our introduction, the main point is I'm reminding myself I'm standing before a God who is great and mighty and awesome and has all the power, right? If I told you you have a long lost father who's a millionaire and he loves you and he wants to give you everything, how do you react? Do you say, prove it? Or do you say, what's his telephone number? Which one? (laughs) Which one? Teach me how to connect to God. Teach me how to keep Shabbos. Teach me how to put a fill in right, right, right. I want to connect to him, right? He's great. I'm, I'm standing before a great and mighty and awesome God. He's a God on high. He does kind deeds. His greatness is that he does kind deeds. Not that he's big muscles, right, right? Everything belongs to him. Even the good things, even bad things are his. And he remembers the kindness of the forefathers. And he will bring a redemption to their children's children. He would just span history from the days of Abraham to, the, to Mashiach, right? One verse, right? For his name, out of love. Now, generally, when you love someone, you do something for their sake, not for your sake. How is he doing it for his sake? Out of love, right, right, right? And the answer is because God doesn't need anything. Everything is for... Every, when, he, when we say God's name, it means out of love. Everything God does out of love. He doesn't need anything. We're not doing God a favor when we... Uh, when we, you know, do the mitzvahs, right? He's doing us a favor, right, 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 yeah. My children think they're doing me such a big favor when they brush their teeth, right? when they do their homework, right? When they look both ways, when they cross, they're doing me a favor, right, 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 right? They don't know it's for their benefit. They don't know that, right? Everything is for God. His name is out of love. Melech King, Ozer Helper, Moshiach Savior, and Mogain and Shield. What does that mean? Ozer is a helper, right? I do the job and he helps me. Moshiach well, means a savior, right, right? Um, I'm in trouble, and he saves me, right? I don't do anything. Moke means shield. I don't, he, he prevents me from getting into the trouble in the first place. You see the difference, right? Oze means I do it, and he helps me. Moshiach well, means I do nothing, and he, he saves me. And Moke means he prevents me from getting into trouble in the first place. He's a shield. And again, we bend our knees, Baruch, Ato, we bend our heads, Hashem, you lift our heads, Hashem, master of everything, wasn't it? It'll be right. Mogain Avram, the shield of Avram Avinu, right? Because Hashem said to Avram, I will be, I will be your shield. So even though we mentioned Avram, Yitzhak Yaakov, but Avram was the first one, right? Pasha Lechlecha, God says to Avram, I'll make your name great, right? Abraham Pasha, Abraham Lincoln, your name will be great. And all the Jews from millions of you know, millions of Jews throughout the generations will call God the God of Abraham, the Gate of Avram, the shield of Avram. 
That's the first bracha. Let's call it off. So the first, the structure of the Shemona Esri is we have three blachas in the beginning, three blessings in the beginning, and three in the end, which remain the same throughout every Shemona Esri. The middle changes for the weekday, for the Shabbat, for the holidays, right? But the first three and the last three are the same. So the first one is of us representing our credentials, you know? Imagine you see someone who's the grandson of one of your best friends. You haven't seen your best friend for many years, and here his grandson comes. You'll take him to your house, you'll treat him very special, right, right, right? That's the idea here. We're the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The second blessing is called Gevuros, greatness. You are great forever, Hashem. You make life the dead. You are great to save. What's God's greatness? That he saves us and he's good. Right, right, right. In the secular world, greatness means oh, the biggest, strong, the, the strongest muscles, right? Fastest gun in the West. He died with his boots on. Right, right, right. The best hunter, the best killer. Right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting, you know, in the American uh, entertainment world, right? The television and the movies and the, even the comic books, the original ones were all Jews. They were all Jews. <laughs> Warner Brothers were all Jews. Marx Merrill Brothers, right, 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 right. And, these Jews, even though they were secular Jews, right? They, they weren't religious right at all, right, right? But they still had Jewish values. They taught the world, Superman, right? Who's Superman? He does good, right? That's the American way, right? Where'd they get that from? Torah, right? Well, the Father knows best. All the, the, the original Hollywood, right? All the, the, the values were Jewish values, which they got from us, from them, right, right, right? Interesting, it's interesting. You are great forever, you, do, you are great to save. Then we say he makes the wind blow, he makes the rain fall, right? You know, uh, we started saying now after uh, the last day of Sukkot, we ask for rain, right? Why don't we ask before? Why don't we ask before? Because we don't want it to rain in our Sukkot, right, 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 right? So there's, uh, so Sukkot, we are praying for rain, right? We have the, 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 the harafas, the, the willow has to do with rain, and uh, many things have to do with rain. So one opinion was we start saying, asking, we say, make the wind blow, on the first day of Sukkot, like we start mowing the towel, you know, we say the first day of Pesach, right, right? And the other guy says, what? You're going to ask for rain while you're sitting in your Sukkot? No, I didn't mean ask for rain. No, later on we have a bracha, the same talumata, give rain. He was just praising God that he makes the way rain fall. And the other guy says, no, we can't even do that. Because once you say, God, you're so great, you make the rain fall, we thank him for the rain, immediately it comes rain. <laughs> we don't want it to rain in our Sukkot. We'll wait till the last day, last day, right, last day. <laughs> See, once you say God, you get it. You want something from God, you have to thank Him for it. You thank Him for it, you get it. <laughs> so in Nusach in, Ashkenaz, in Chutz in, in, in during the summer, you don't say anything. In Nusach Sfard and Nusach Ashkenaz in Israel, the, the custom of the Grah, we had Mori Ratal, the dew. Right? You know, dew is a very important thing. <laughs> Without dew, things wouldn't grow. Right? In, the summer, in Israel, there's no rain in the summer, right? The dew is what keeps it going. You sustain life with kindness. You make life the dead with your great mercy. So I said, make life the dead referring to the resurrection of the dead in the future. And also referring to waking up in the morning. You're dead and you wake up. You lift the fallen and you cure the sick. And you free the imprisoned, right? And you fulfill you, and he fulfills his faith to those who are sleeping in the dust, those who are dead. Who is likened to you, owner of greatness, who's compared to you, makes dead or makes life or makes grow salvation. Salvation is a growth, matzmiach. It starts off a little bit, gets more and more and more and more, until it comes there, you know? It's a growth. Ne'emon atol la'achiyos meisim. You are faithful to make life the dead. It's a basic, fundamental principle of Judaism, resurrection of the dead, right, right? That's why we're not allowed to desecrate bodies, right? A dead body cannot be desecrated, right? Autopsies are forbidden in certain cases, certain exceptions, but generally we don't make autopsies, right? We're not allowed to cremate a body, right? Because we believe in the right now, even though... It's not a problem for God to resurrect the body that's cremated. You know, what about all the Holocaust victims that were cremated? It's no problem for God, right, right, right? But we are not allowed to do it. We have to show our belief in the resurrection of the dead. So the second bracha is greatness of God. So we stated who we are. We're standing where God is great and mighty, and God has all the power. The third blessing is Kedusha, holiness. And it just says, it's a small, on page 102, Atak Kadosh, your holy name is holy, holy, holy God, during the ten days of repentance, Hamelach Kadosh, holy came. But here, when we have a minion, we recite the Kadusha. Let's see the Kadusha on the bottom, on page 100. We shall sanctify your name in this world, just as you sanctified it in the heavens above. As it says by your prophets, they called to each other, they said, Kadosh, 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 the angel recognizes God's greatness and he yells, Kadosh! And he goes down and he goes, Kadosh, Kadosh, right? Three words, then he says God's name. Jews say Shema Yisrael after two words, Hashem. When we say God's name after two words, we're greater than the angels. The God of hosts, the whole world is full of his honor. So 
in more detail, the Kedusha on Shabbat adds a few more details. Turn ahead to Shacharis on Shabbos. Shabbos morning, we'll see the Kedusha there adds a few more details to this. Uh, on page 422, right? So the first part is the same. We sanctify your name in this world. Let us, let us sanctify your name as they sanctify it. We, we are, want to be partners with the angels to sanctify God's name. Oz bekol rash kodol, then with a great and awesome voice. Chazak, azdir v'chazak mashmiyim kol, awesome and strong, do they make their voice heard. Nisasim, they lift up the sraf, the sraf about the burnt angels. The angels, they go up close to God, and they get burnt, come down, burnt, right? Opposite them, they say, Baruch kibor Hashem im komo, blesses the honor of God from his place. From your place, O our king, please appear. From your place means from Mount Zion. And rule over us, because we're waiting for you. When will you be the king in Zion? Soon in our days, forever will you dwell. May you be sanctified and glorified in the city, Jerusalem, your city, for generation for generation, for all eternity. And may our eyes merit to see your kingdom, as it says in the songs of David, God shall rule forever, the God of Zion, for a generation of you are God. That's Shacharis. Now let's skip to Musaf, right? Musaf is on page uh, 464, right? And Nusach Sfar has a very special Nusach. Nusach Sfar says like this, Keser yitnu l'cha Hashem v'lokeinu, a crown will they give you, the Lord our God. Malochim amone malo, the angels swarming above. Em amcha Yisrael kavutse mata, with you people Israel down below. The Jewish, the angels are looking for a chavrusa, a partner to sing God's praises. Who's their partner? The Jewish people. The angels above and the Jewish people down below. Nusach Ashkenaz is not a ritzcha. You have not 464. Not a ritzcha and agdishcha. We will revere you. We will sanctify you with the with the according to the counsel of the holy Srafim, who sanctify your name in holiness, as it says, Kodesh, Kodesh, Kodesh. Right? His honor filleth the world. His angels ask one another, "Where is the place of his honor?" Didn't you just say a minute ago, "His honor filleth the world"? Right? Right? Why are you asking? Where is the place of his honor? He just said his honor. He just said where it is. Right? But the question is, how do I get there, right? His honor fills the world, but i got to approach his honor. How do I get there? Where is the place of his honor? How can I get close to him, right? And the answer, Baruch Kvod Hashem Im Komo. The honor of him is from his place, the holy mountain. From his place does he turn with mercy and have compassion on the nation and make his name one. Evening and morning, every day, constantly they say, Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokein Hashem Echad. And the question, of course, is how did Shema Yisrael come into the Kedusha of Muslim on Shabbos? Right, 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 right. We already said it before. What is it, how's it coming over here? Right, right? Very interesting answer. Very interesting answer. There was a period in our history when the non-Jews would not allow us to say the Shema in public. Did you know that? Right? God is one, he's not one, he's three, right, 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 can't say he's one. And they put a guard in the synagogue to make sure, who was the guy, usually a Jew had converted, right, right, he knew the prayers, right, and he stood there and made sure they didn't say the Shema in public, right, right, right. But coming to Musaf, the, the Chazor Sashas of Musaf, right, the prayers are almost over, people start taking off their taluses already, they start bringing out the kugel for the kiddish, right, 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 and that guy goes home, right, they stick it in, Shema Israel. after the guy left, they pick the stick it in over here, Shema Yisrael, right, right, right. You know, that, that's the same reason for the Haftorah. You know what the Haftorah is, right? We read a portion of the prophets after the reading of the Torah every week. And there's a custom to read it from a parchment, very similar to reading of the Torah. And this started off with a custom. There was a time in our history when they forbade us to read the Torah in public. So we said, you mean Torah, Torah? You mean the five books? How about the prophets? Well, that's okay, right? So we took the prophets, we read them in a scroll, we found a portion of the prophets which was, had some connection to the reading of the Torah of that part of the week, right, right? And then we read it like the reading of the Torah, right, right? So once it became a custom, it remains a custom, right? It's interesting that Hasidim today, the Torah, they read it very quickly. They don't read it from partial, they read it very quickly, right? I think that was because of the, that was their reaction to the Haskalah. Haskalah, you know, 100 years ago, there were these intellectual Jews that decided, we're not going to be Talmud Jews, right? Halakha Jews. We're going to be biblical Jews, right? They made a big thing out of the Tanakh, right? And they, they, uh, they put down the, the, the Talmud, right, right? So the reaction of the Talmud Jews was to de-emphasize the Tanakh, right? That's why, unfortunately, Shiva boys don't know Tanakh. There was a time when you studied Chumash, you Tanakh. And today, we know Chumash, but most Yeshiva boys do not know Tanakh very well, right? Because right? we de-emphasize it, right? You ask a Yeshiva guy, a Pusik in the, in the Prophets, oh yeah, the Gemara brings it over here. <laughs> I know where the Gemara brings it. I know, the, I know the Pusik, right? right, right, right. right? So I think as a result of that, Hasidim, the, 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 the custom to read the Haftorah, they didn't want to stop the custom. We still have a custom with the bracha, they still said it, right? But instead of reading it from a scroll, they, each, they say the bracha and they read it real fast. <laughs> to de-emphasize, all that. Today, 
already, that, that, that's gone already. We don't have these uh, maskilim anymore. We, we should learn the Tanakh today more. Anyway, getting back to the Kedusha. We have to Shema Yisrael, right? He is our God. He is our Father. He is our King. He is our Savior. He will let us hear in His mercy a second time before the eyes of all of the flesh. When was the first time? At Revelation on Sinai. You spoke to us on Mount Sinai, but the whole world didn't hear you, right, right? Whereas, please speak to us again, and this time before the eyes of all living, to be for a God, I am Hashem. Okay, so that's the Kedusha. Turn back to page 100, the weekday Kedusha. The door of a door, Nagid Galecha. For generation to generation will we tell your greatness. For all eternity will we sanctify your holiness. And your praise, our God, from our mouths will never go off away from our mouths. We'll never leave our mouths forever. Because you're a great and holy king, Ruchat Hashem, Akela Kaddish, the holy God. So the first three blessings of Shwan Esra remain the same, right? For all Shwan Esra's. Now we come to the middle part of the weekday Shwan Esra, which is requests, right? We have to ask God for everything because we have to recognize that everything comes from Him, all right? Right? And what's the first request? Understanding. Understanding. It starts off with the introduction. You graciously endow man with wisdom, and you teach insights to mortal, right? Please endow us graciously with your insight, with your wisdom. Why does that have to say an introduction? I just start right away, give us wisdom, right? Why does that have to start with that introduction, right, right, right? We don't find all the others like that, right? Uh, you, you know, you don't say, uh, uh, for example, you give us rain, please give us rain. You give us cure, give us, we don't say that, only, only, only this one, because intellectual, well, in, intellect, we think, it's our own. We don't know what comes from God, right? We think, I'm so smart. I got this IQ. <laughs> right, right. We, we think it's our own thing, right? If we have to start with a little bit, you don't care. Now, why is the first request understanding? Why is that the first request? Then, you give a child a toy, and he throws it down and breaks it. Give him a second toy, and he throws it down and breaks it. Will you give him a third toy? Why not? Because he doesn't appreciate it, right? We want to ask God for many things. The first thing is... We have to appreciate it, right? So we have to, right? We ask God for give us understanding so we can appreciate it. Chon and Adas, give us knowledge. Second thing is repentance. Return us, our Father, to your Torah. Bring us close, our King, to your service. Where you're our Father, you're our King. Bring us close to repentance before you. The only thing God wants, He wants us to repent. So repent means, right, recognizing what we've done wrong and coming back, wanting to come back to God. Now, after we repented, God has to atone us. The next one is atonement, but forgiveness, right? I, I, I come to you, Ben, I slapped you in the face, I kicked you in the shins, I cursed your parents, I stole your wallet. I'm not sorry. I'm going to do it again tomorrow. Please forgive me. <laughs> you say, too bad. <laughs> when you apologize, the first thing you say, I'm sorry, I won't do it again, right? That's forgive us. That's tshuva, right, right? Then comes atonement. Say, I forgive you, right? Forgive us, our Father, because we have sinned, right? Pardon us, our King, because we have transgressed, we willfully sinned, un errors, un unintentionally sinned, right? Because you are one who pardons and forgives. Chanun, compassionate one, hamar belis who increases to forgive. Now, in Judaism, no human being can forgive your sins, right? Only God. Only God. All right? Judaism, there are three steps to repentance. The first step is regret. You have to regret having done the act. Now, there are many degrees of regret, right? You lose $5, you regret it. $50, you regret it more. $500, a lot more. $5,000, kick yourself in the pants. $5 million, jump off the roof. All right, right? Many degrees of regret, but at least regret it to some extent. Then accept upon yourself, you won't do it again, right? You can't say, huh, I'm not sorry, I'm going to do it again tomorrow. I won't do it. And then comes confession. This is confession. Uh, forgive me, Hashem. I was standing before you. I was, what's the key word? Before you. I was standing before you. I wasn't aware. You walk down Times Square, right? You look over here, look over there, walk like that. You walk down Times Square with your great rabbi you respect. You act differently. You don't look everywhere, right? What if you walk down time with God over your shoulder? How do you act now, all right? We're not aware. Now I'm aware. So we ask, the first thing we ask is for understanding, the second thing we ask is for repentance and for forgiveness. The fourth lesson, gula, redemption. See, please our affliction and fight our fights and redeem us quickly for your sake because you're a great redeemer. So this couldn't refer to a Mashiach, right? But the commentaries say it's referring to everything. Any redemption a person needs. I need a job. I need to get well. I need to find a shidduch. I have whatever you need, right? Redeem us. Whatever it is I need, God helps us. 
redeem us from the trials and agonies of everyday life, for your sake, right? It's for your sake. I, I'm doing it for your sake, right? I want to serve you, God, right? For your sake, right? We said in the, and we added on in Rosh Hashanah, uh, remember us for life, king who desires life, right? So for your sake, God, right? I want life so I can do your will. Otherwise, well, otherwise uh, why, why do you ask for life, right? <laughs> uh, you ever hear of uh, Khrushchev, right? Akita Khrushchev, right, right? He was, a, he was a, the, the premier of Russia, right? And he, in the middle of the UN, he takes off a shoe and bangs on the table, right, right, right? A little drug, he was a drug, right, right? So there was a Cuban crisis, there, almost a, a nuclear war, right, right? And uh, Khrushchev, I'm giving you an analogy. Khrushchev says, I'm going I'm to nuke America, right? You know, he has this, this uh, button that you push, and all the looks over America, right? Well, the president of America also has a button he pushes all the all looks over Russia, right, right, right? So after him saying this, you know, he changed his mind and he was afraid that the Americans would look them first, right, right, right? So they send this guy, a spy, to come to America and have a private audience with the President of the United States and explain to him that, the, that you know, Nikita was a little bit high, right? He didn't really mean it, right, right, right? He comes to America to do, he comes to New York to go to Washington. There's a flight that goes straight to Las Vegas. Wow, he's got a lot of money with him, right, right? He goes to Las Vegas and starts gambling, right, 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 right? He's got plenty of time, right, right? After two days, he gets a call from his boss, the KGB. You know, Boris, how's it going? To the president, right? well, I haven't gotten here. I'm still in Las Vegas, right? You know, you need, I need more money. I use the more money. You have a mission to save the world from a nuclear war by going to the president's visit, and you're in Las Vegas, right? right, right? And you want more money? <laughs> God puts us in this world for a purpose, right? Instead of doing what God wants, we're playing around with our lives, right? Having a good time, right? And we say, God, hey, you know, God, I'm not doing what you want me to do, but uh, give me some more life. <laughs> some more life. Give me some more life, right? right? Some more money to, to throw out of Las Vegas. <laughs> for your sake. We're saying, Leman Shemecha, for your sake, God. For your sake, I want. That's the idea. So we got, Meir Leman Shemecha, save us for your sake. I want to do your job in this world, right? Person knows if God needs you in this world, you're okay. If he doesn't need you, then you're in trouble. Right, right, right? God needs you, right? Next, we come to cure, page 104. Cure us, Hashem, may we be, cu when we, may we be cured. And save us, we should be saved, because you are praise. And make a refuah shalema, a complete uh, you know, a, a cure for all of our plagues, because you are a faithful and merciful doctor, right? You have a doctor who is very nice and very good, but uh, he takes a lot of money, right? Or he doesn't take a lot of money, but he's not so skillful, right? Or, you know, uh, you can't get along with him, right? God is a merciful God. He's skillful. He doesn't take, take any money, right? 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 He cures the sick of his people. You add on over here. If you have someone who's ill, you can add on a prayer for, for someone who's ill. Next is just sustenance, right? Bless upon us this year and all of the grains for good, and put a blessing on the face of heaven. So we're going to come to St. Saint, Saint Talamotor, uh, dew and rain. So, so in Israel, starting uh, in a week, we're going to start saying St. Talamotor. We are a, little, a short time after Sukkot, we start saying, give us rain. The, the diaspora, they start later, because when we had the pilgrimage holidays, so the Jews that came to, to the pilgrimage on their way back home, we don't want it to rain on their way back. We don't ask for rain while well, they're still traveling, right? So we wait till they got back. So, so the, in the Chutzlar, we start saying St. Talamoto, the equinox. It's already the equinox. When it's ready to, uh, it's, the, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a date, that it's a, a secular day. It's December, December uh, 3rd, I believe. It's December 3rd, and if it's a leap year, it's December uh, it's December 4th, it's Libra, it's December 5th. Right, right, right? Those who were in Israel during that period, it's a question, which one do they say? Do they say, no, they don't say it. So it's a question, you ask your local Orthodox rabbi, right, right? You can say it in Shemani, Shemakaleinu. Send blessings, send dew and rain for a blessing on the face of the earth and sustain us from your good and bless upon us a good year. So we ask for wisdom, we ask for forgiveness, we ask for cure, we ask for sustenance. These are, that's a, these are personal things, right? Of course, notice everything's in the plural, right? The whole Shemitah is in the plural. We, we, we are part of the Jewish people. When you, that's why we're supposed to die with a minion, right? When you die with a minion, right? Or when you govern individually, you govern, do you deserve it? You know, my kid comes to me for a favor. Do you deserve it? Were you good today? We all come at the same time. Okay. <laughs> die with a minion, it all goes up together, right? right? I went to a beautiful analogy of davening with a minion. You know, there was a test in the university, and there was a proxy. You know what a proxy is? He's not the teacher, but he just makes sure nobody cheats during the test. The proxy tells the students, you've got exactly one hour to make this test. I don't take any tests after that. 
Everybody hurried up to finish the test. One guy took his time. The hour was over. He kept on going. Five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Finally, he finished it. Over. I told you I have one hour. I said, do you know who I am? I don't care who you are. Do you know my name? I don't care if you're the son of the dean. You're not going more than an hour. Takes his paper, sticks it into the pile, walks out. <laughs> he knows his name. Couldn't take it out. <laughs> when you die with the he looks at you. Who are you, right? When you die with the rabbi, your, your paper's in the pile. It all goes up. <laughs> so all the prayers are in general, right? And now we're asking for benefit for the public in general. Page 106. Blow with the great chauffeur our redemption, right? The prophet says, on that day, the talk of a chauffeur God will be a great chauffeur being blown, right? And lift up a banner to gather our redemptions, right? Our exiles. And gather together the four corners of the earth or our land. We're asking for the ingathering of the exiles. You gather the scatter of the people of Israel, right? And Jews that don't know the Jews, you have to, when you think, say this blessing, think about the Jews who, uh, the, the, the silent Holocaust is going on. There's so many Jews that don't even know they're Jewish, right? You have in Israel, kibbutzim, they don't know how to say Shema, they don't say Abraham, right? Nothing. Right? Return us our judges like the original ones, and our advisors like in the beginning. And would remove from us sighing and sobbing, no more pain, no more trouble, and rule over us, Hashem, you alone, with kindness and with mercy, and righteousness and justice. Baruch Atah Hashem, King who loves righteousness and justice. You have to have righteousness, you have to have justice, right? It's a balance, right? You can't uh, be too soft, right? You have to have justice, and you have to get too, too strict, right? You have to know, right? The judges of New York City are very, very merciful, right? On the, on the criminals, and not on the victims, right, right, right. Let them out and they go and do it again. Now, we call the prayer Shmona Esrei. Shmona Esrei means 18. But if you count them, guess what you find? 19, right? Only Jews can do that. Huh? Only Jews can make a dollar out of 99 cents. <laughs> right, 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 right. Uh, so there really was 18 originally, and a, a 19th one was added. And still, still it's just, it's just had the name 18. We kept the name 18. That, that name stuck, right? Right. It's really 19. And which is the one that was added, the one we're about to read now? To the spies, the slanderers, may there be no hope. And all the wicked ones in a minute shall be, shall be perished. And all your enemies shall be cut off quickly, right? Speedily. And those who sin wantonly, willingly, shall be uprooted and broken and smashed and cast down, right? And, and humbled, humbled quickly in our days. Baruch Hashem breaks the enemies, and humbles the sinners. That was added on one, which we only, uh, which, uh, which uh, when, when in those days, you could tell who, who a minute was if we didn't say it. Now comes the opposite. Allah tzaddikim, on the righteous, Allah chassidim, on the pious, on the elders of the people of Israel, on the remnant of the scribes. You know, we once said tremendous Torah leaders, right? And just, just a remnant left. How many are left today? Great, great scholars, right? On the righteous converts and upon us. May it be your mercy, Hashem, and good, good reward to all who trust in your name in truth. If you trust in God's name in truth, give good reward and put our portion with them forever. We shall never be embarrassed because in you do we trust. Baruch Atah Hashem, you're a staff and a trust to the righteous. A staff means a mainstay, you know, when you lean on it, leaning stick for those who are righteous. So we put down the wicked and we end, we'll raise up the righteous. Now we come to Jerusalem, page 108. To Jerusalem, your city, in mercy return, and dwell within it as you have spoken, and build it soon in our days, a building forever, everlasting building, and the seed of David put inside of it, right? We're not just acting to build Jerusalem physically. Ours, right, right, right. We, we, uh, so what do I have to say? We're here in Jerusalem now. Why do we say the Shana Babu? For us, Jerusalem is not just, uh, you know, Jerusalem is, is the base of Mithish. That's what Jerusalem is, right, 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 right. You know, we see the Kotel as a positive symbol, right? The Six-Day War. But the truth of the matter is, the Kotel is a very negative symbol. It's a, the, the remnants of our chapter. It's the ruins, right, right, right? There was a great rabbi named Chaim, Chaim Yosef Chaim Zunnefeld. He was the chief rabbi of the old city of Jerusalem before the state. And he lived in a shambles, right? Lived in a hole in the ground, his house. But it was right opposite the Kotel. You know, today's worth a million dollars, right, 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 right opposite the Kotel, right? Had a window opening to the Kotel, right? And when people ask him, you're the rabbi over here. People, important people come to visit you. How can you live in such a, in such a, in such a rambles, in such a house? And he would take the curtain and look at, point to the kotel. If it's good enough for the master, it's good enough for the servant. Anyway, we're in exile. Am I right? So we ask Hashem, Yerushalayim, that's the real Yerushalayim. Build soon, right? The spiritual Yerushalayim, right? Bone Yerushalayim. 
and then comes Mashiach. Now we come for a prayer for Mashiach. It's Semach David, the offspring of David. Quickly may grow. It's going to grow. It's going to start off with a little spark and it's going to get more and more and more and more. The Balchufa movement started very slow. Now, Baruch Hashem, uh, it's, it's, you know, it's snowballing, right? So many people, so many Jews are coming back to Torah, right? In, in, in Chutz Laaretz, in Israel. Tremendous, right? We have the Jewish people today are going in two directions. One direction back down, one direction back up, right? right, right? Baruch Hashem. The growth of David your servant may quickly may grow, and his horn shall you lift with your salvation, for your salvation. Do, do we hate all the days? We wait all the days. And this is why we're and we're we're, we're we're waiting. Sapping means we're waiting for your Yeshua. We can't wait for your Mashiach, for your redemption. Who makes grow the horn of salvation? And now comes a general prayer. You know, if you have anything you want to ask God, here's the place to add it on. Shema koleinu Hashem olokeinu. Hear our voice, the Lord our God. Chus v'rachem oleinu. Have compassion and mercy upon us. V'kabel v'rachem imavarotzon esfiloseinu. Accept with mercy and with desire. Accept it's our prayers. Because you're a God who listens to prayers. And before you break them off to shiveinu, right? Now you can add a private prayer over here if you like. Right? Here in the parentheses you have some examples. One of them is for our sins, and one of them is for, for livelihood, which should give us uh, money and jobs, right, right? And you can have anything you want, right? I should find a shidduch, right? I should have part of I should I be well. Anything you need, I should get the job, right, right? Of course, you never ask for something specific because you never know what's for you good or not, right? I want that girl, right? I want that job. You say, God, if this is the right girl for me, let it work out. If not, not. If it's the right job for me, let it work out. If not, not, right? That's how you should say, right? We never know what's good for us or not, right? You know what the blessing in disguise is? How often in life do things happen that you think are so terrible? It turns out to be good in the end, all right? God wants to marry a certain girl. He's praying, let, me, let her say yes. And she says no. He's so broken until a week later he meets another girl. Huh? Boy, am I glad she said no. <laughs> happens all the time. Happens all the time. <laughs> So here you can add on any prayer you want in your own language. God understands English, right? Right? And we, and we, and we end with uh, page 10, 110 because you hear the prayers of your people Israel in mercy. Ruch Hashem, Shomayat Tefillah. Here are the prayers. So that is the middle part is for the weekdays. And we'll see the Shabbos prayers. Uh, we add on uh, different things. I'm going to go through the Shabbos prayers maybe in the afternoon today. We have time now. And now we'll get to the last three which are the same in Old Shemona Esbez. Come to the last three. So this is called Avoda, service of God. Be favorable to your people Israel and their prayers and return the service to your holy place and the fire offerings of Israel and their prayers and love shall you accept in, in favor. And may always be in favor of the service of your people. So there's two opinions where to put the comma over here, right? We say, Return the service to your place and the fire of Israel. The fire of Israel means the fire offerings, right? You put the comma over there. It's going on. Return the service and the fire offerings. And their prayers out of love accept. That's one way of reading it. Or you could read it. Return the service to your holy place. Stop. And the fire offerings and their prayers accept. But that implies we're bringing sacrifices today. We don't have sacrifices today. What does it mean? What fire offerings do we have today, right? And the answer is... The Jews that are killed, Kiddush Hashem, Jews that are stabbed to death, the fire, the children, right? We bring, we bring fire offerings today as well, right? These are our offerings, right? The Jews that are killed to sanctify God's name, the things that are killed, that, that, that's our fire offerings today. We're bringing them as well. Those are the two opinions. I read it. On Rosh Chodesh, we add on, on holidays, we add on over here. Go up, we offer when come and reach, right? And be noted. And be heard and be considered and be remembered, the remembrance and the consideration of our ourselves and our forefathers and of Mashiach, the son of David, and Jerusalem, the city of your holiness, and your entire people, Israel, for, for good, for favor, for kindness, for mercy, for life, and for peace on this day of Rosh Chodesh or the holiday of Pesach, the Sukkot, right? Remember us for good, right? Consider us for blessing, help us for life, right? And salvation and mercy forever. Have forever as we are. And then we come to the end of the blessing. Is the May our eyes see when you return in mercy to Zion, right? And do my eyes deserve to see it? Have I washed my eyes properly? Have I kept my eyes properly holy? Right, right, right. He returns his presence to Zion. So that's Avoda. And now comes thanks, right? Modim. 
When you say modim, you bend your knees, modim, and you anachnu, you bend your head, anachnu lach Hashem, and then you lift your head. But when you say modim, you're supposed to lift your head like this, like a snake, all right, like a snake. First a little bit, then a little bit more. We bow down to you, we thank you, that you are the Lord of our God forever, the rock of our, self, of our lives, the shield of our salvation, for generation to generation, we thank you and we tell your praises for the life which you've given into our, which are given over to your hands. Our lives are given over in your hands anytime we can stop it. On the souls that are given over to you when we go to sleep at night, we're giving our souls over to God. On the miracles that happen every day with us, on the wonders and prayer favors at, every, at all times, evening, morning, and afternoon, the good doesn't end your mercy. The merciful one doesn't stop your kindness. Forever do we open to you. Do you see miracles every day? Well, if you open up your eyes, you certainly do, right? right? Eyesight is a miracle. Right, right? <laughs> Birth, childbirth is a miracle, right? And, you know, sometimes the, the, the Goyim remind us, right, how precarious our situation is, right, right? You know, during the troubles in Ireland, there wasn't one pub in Northern Ireland that wasn't bombed, right, right, right? And here we are walking around in Jerusalem, Baruch Hashem, right, 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 right? Once in a while, God sends us these incidents to remind us, you know, they can do it all the time, they can do it every day, right, right, right? The fact that it happens so, so rarely, right, right, right? Is it true? It's a It's a miracle. Open miracles. Everything's a miracle. I once read a book of embryology. Embryology, right? How the embryo uh, is formed in the, in, the, in the fetus, right? In the, in, the, in the womb. And it's interesting, you know, the eyeball is not formed together with the, the uh, optic nerve. It's separate. The eyeball is, it, it forms itself. Then a, a, a nerve grows out from the brain, the optic nerve, and it attaches to the eyeball in about a million spots. And if one spot doesn't attach, you can't see. And the scientist says they can't figure out how does the optic nerve know exactly where to attach, right? You can't figure it out, right? It evolved by accident. Right, 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 right. They can't figure it out. So it's wonders and miracles every moment of our life. Now, when the Chazim recites the Modim, we say Modim Rabbanim. You see in the, in, the, in the gray square, this is the Modim we say to ourselves, we thank you that you are Hashem, our God, the God of our fathers, the God of all flesh, our creator of creation, from, from Genesis, from the universe, blessings and thanks to your great and holy name that you let us live and exist, so shall we live and exist and continue and we gather our exiles to the courtyards of your, for, of your holiness, your holy courtyards, and keep your laws and do your God and your will and to serve you with the blue of heart for the fact that we thank you. Blessed is the God of thanksgiving. Got that? We're thanking God for the fact that we can thank God, right? We thank you for the fact that we can thank you. Yeah, you like that? All right, right, right. Similar to what it says, one of the vidus we say, one of the confessions we say on Yom Kippur is, we say confession, right, for confessing without intention. All right, right? Vidu pe, oral confession, right, right? Uh, I'm sorry for saying I'm sorry without meaning it, right? You know, you know the three most important words in a successful marriage? What are they? Not I love you. Not I love you, but I was wrong. Right? <laughs> it's the most difficult three words to say. I was wrong. <laughs> Forever do we hope into you. On Hanukkah we add on, on the Nisim, on the miracles, on Hanukkah and Purim, on the Purkan, on the Gvuras, on the for the mighty deeds and wars that you did with our ancestors in those days, right? Interesting. Hanukkah, let's just see Hanukkah. In the days of Matisiel, the son of Yochanan, the high priest. You know, who was the high priest? Yochanan, not Matisio. Sons of the days of Matisio, the son of Yochanan, the high priest, right? Chashmanoyim, the family of Chashmanoyim. When the wicked, evil Greek kingdom came upon your people Israel to make them forget your Torah and to make them break the laws of your desires. Did you ever learn in school that the Greeks were wicked? Did they tell you that the Greeks were wicked in school? No, they gave us philosophy, they gave us sports, they gave us the Senate, they gave us so much important things, right, right? Enlightenment, right, right? We know they were evil because we experienced it on our backs, right? I once read a, a National Geographic about Germany. The Gemutlicha Germans. Gemutlicha means good hearted. You ask a German for, for directions, he'll smile, to go that way, straight to the gas chambers, right? He'll tell you where to go. Right? He'll tell you where to go. Right? With a smile. Right, right, right? We know all about the good hearted Germans. Don't tell us. We know all about it, right, right, right? The Greeks wanted to make us forget our Torah. I thought they wanted world domination and the Jews got in their way. Right, right, right. No, their goal was to destroy the Torah, to make you break their laws, and you, with your great mercy, stood for them at their time of trouble. You fought their battles. You, you judged their justice. You took their revenge. You gave over the mighty in the hands of the weak, the many in the hands of the few, the unclean in the hands of the clean, the wicked ones in the hands of the righteous. 
the Zaydim, the ones who were the, the wanton in the hands of those who study your Torah. So you think the Maccabees were big heroes. Maccabee beer, Maccabee soccer team, right? They were yeshiva students with thick glasses, right? <laughs> study your Torah, right? right, right. right? Guerrilla warfare, right? You people imagine the boys in the yeshiva shooting a guerrilla warfare, right? 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 Your people in Israel, you made a tremendous salvation. Your people in Israel, right? Like this day, and if afterwards your sons came to your, to your, to your sanctuary, they cleaned up your sanctuary, they cleansed, cleansed the sanctuary, and they lit the candles. That's here, hinting to the miracle of the candles, right? In your courtyard, right? And they established eight days of Hanukkah to thank and to praise you. On Purim, we say, in the times of Mordechai and Esther and Shush on the capital, Haman the wicked wanted to destroy and kill all the Jews from young to old, children and women, in one day, the first Hitler, one day. Didn't make a difference if we were citizens or not. Pay yourself. The Greeks was spiritual. They didn't want us to be Jews. You, know? you can have a temple, Jews, but make sure you uh, use contaminated oil for the, for the menorah and throw the pigs on the altar, right? <laughs> but the Persians, they wanted to kill us. Haman wanted to kill us all, right? So how do we reply? How do we react to Haman, right? We fasted three days. How do we react to the, to, the, to the Greeks? We took up our swords and we fought the Greek Empire, right? right? The Greek Empire, right? right, right. You know? <laughs> The Israeli Air Force is pretty good, right? What do you think they take on the combined forces of America, China, and Russia? Good idea? <laughs> I don't think so. All right. The Greek Empire, that's America, China, and Russia together, right? And they, he commanded, uh, Haman set a decree on the 13th day of the month of Adar, right? And t- they take all their booty, and you and your great mercy, you nullified his, de- his decree, you frustrated his attention, you caused his design to return on his head, and they hung him and his sons on the air the tree. And now we come to the, uh, on everything, do we bless you and thank you. The blessing is called thanks. Forever, right? All the living shall thank you forever. They shall praise your name in truth, the God of salvation. Baruch atah Hashem, bend your knee, atah, bend your head, atah, who good, your name is good, and to you it is beautiful to thank. So we just thank God for everything. And now comes the last blessing. Give us peace. Isn't that a little bit strange? Oh, by the way, God, I, I asked you for all the things. I thank you. For, oh, I forgot one more thing. Oh, by the way, P.S. Give us peace, right, right, right? Is this peace a request? Shouldn't it be with the requests? Why is it in the end? It shouldn't have been before, right, right? We already thank God for everything. Thank you so much. Oh, by the way, one more thing. Right, 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 right. You know, that's strange, right, right? You, know, you have to learn the sinner. You have to understand. The men who wrote the sinner, the men in the Great Assembly, they, they wrote it with Ruach HaKadosh, Holy Spirit. Right, 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 right. And the answer is, it's continuation of thanks, God. We want to thank you, but we can't thank you properly if we have troubles. If there's chaos, if there's wars, if there's sicknesses, right? You know, when, when you're in the middle of a, a lot of trouble, it's very hard to thank God, right, 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 right? Give us peace. Give us good. Give us blessing. Give us favor. Give us kindness. Give us mercy, right? So we can thank you properly. This is a continuation of the thanks, right? Upon us of all of Israel, bless us, our Father, we're all as one with the light of your face. The light, with the light of your face have you given us, right? God shines his face towards us. We have the priestly blessing. The Hashem, we talked about it before. Your Hashem. When a baby is born, he doesn't smile. It takes a few, a little while till his face uh, muscles, uh, you know, uh, till they uh, develop, right, right? And the first time he smiles, ah, the parents go bananas. Look, he smiles, right? Light of your face to us, right? With the light of your face, you've given us a Torah of, dry, of, of life and loving, uh, loving kindness and mercy and ch- righteousness and blessing and life and peace. And if you're good in your eyes to bless us, all, all of Israel at all times, if you peace, Baruch HaTah Hashem, HaMavorech Es Amo Yisrael B'Shalom. He blesses people Israel B'Shalom, right? And here we have the priestly blessings, right? And I, I, always think, I always picture myself when they say the priestly blessings, I see the word shalom up in heaven and it's floating down. All the way finally, shalom, right? It finally comes, it's coming down. Peace between me and myself, inner peace, me and my fellow man, husband and wife, right? Uh, right? Uh, man and God, all the connotations of peace. And now we. And the Shwana Essay. Everything until now was in the plural. And now the last paragraph is in the singular. May it be, may it be so we say, May the expressions of my mouth and the thoughts of my heart be before you. I mean, in, implying you're supposed to think when you say Shwana, just not just say the words. You have to have, there's two things there's the words and the thoughts, right? May it be uh, uh, favor before you. You're my rock and my redeemer. Next page, 118. My God, right? Guard my tongue. This is, this is in the singular. Guard my tongue from evil and my, sp- my mouth and my lips from speaking falsehood. Those who curse me, may, may be, may, I should be silent, right? My soul should be like dust all before me. Open up my heart in your Torah and your riches shall my, 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 shall my soul chase. And all will think about me evil. Quickly d- destroy their, their designs, right? Destroy their thoughts, right? 
for your sake, for your right hand, for your holiness, for your Torah, right? May it be your will, and we go step three steps back, make peace. We down, we take three steps back. Oh, said Shalom, remember you lean on the right side, make peace in your high places. And then lift on that. Who yes, said Shalom, he will make peace upon us and upon all of Israel. Amen. May it be your will, Hashem, that you should build the base and make this quickly in our days and put our portion of the Torah, right, right? That's connected, right? We, uh, we need the base of Migdash, right, for a portion of the Torah. There we will serve you with fear, like the days of old, right? It should be sweet to God, the offering of God. So the last thing we're asking for is a portion of the Torah, right, and the base of Migdash, right? Because it's not complete without it. You know, uh, I just want to end up with an interesting word my Rub said. An esterig, right, has to be complete. If an esterig is, has a part missing to it, it's, it's puzzle. It's no good. The other three species can have a part missing and still be kosher, right? There's all other details. But chaser is forbidden by an esterig, right? So he hinted, what's esterig stand for? Aleph, Tuf, Resh, Gimel, right? And these hint the four things that we ask for in our prayers, and they have to, they have to be complete without missing anything. Aleph stands for emuna. We ask Hashem, Ani mamin be'emuna shalema. I believe with, I, with complete faith. You know, a partial faith is not faith at all, right? Uh, uh, it's a, you're an atheist, right? You don't believe in God. It's atheist. Muna, full place. That's Aleph. Tough stands for tshuva. We ask God, return us with complete repentance, not partial repentance, complete repentance. Rage stands for refua. Well, remedy, right? When you're ill, we ask God for refua, shalema, a complete cure, not just a, a partial cure. And Gimel stands for Geula, redemption. We ask God for Geula, Shalema. We should have a complete redemption, not a partial redemption, right? So these are the things we ask for on Shmon Esri. We ask for a complete faith, complete redemption, complete a Refua, a Tshuva, and finally for Geula, Shalema. So we finished the Shmon Esri. Thank you very much. Any questions, comments, arguments, right? And we'll continue. The next class will be on the, the Shmon Esri of, of Shabbat and the holidays. Okay, thank you very much. Mm-hmm.